What's your London breakfast and Plus TV Africa? Many thanks for joining us and also staying with us. The All Progressive Congress APC candidate, Mr. Byodun Oyebanji, last night, emerged the winner of the Equity State governorship elections by a landslide. Uh, Oyebanji beat his closest rival, Mr. Shegu Oni, of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, by at least 100,000 votes. The People's Democratic Party PDP candidate, Honorable B.C. Kola Wale came third. The election was marred by vote buying, which saw the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, arresting two people, including a chieftain of the PDP in Ado Ekiti, following alleged attempt to induce voters and cause violence. The election, however, witnessed high turnout of voters and heavy security persons as the electorate trooped out to vote for their preferred candidate who will occupy the government house and pilot the affairs of Ekiti State for another four years. Now, we're being joined by uh, a guest, Paul Ejime, international affairs expert and analyst, uh, all the way from Abuja. It's good to have you join us this morning, Paul Ejime. Thank you for having me, Messi. Well, let's get your overall thoughts on the elections, the Ekiti state elections. And of course, with the candidate that emerged, the Ekiti people decided, and you have Biodu Oyebanji, uh, who is the governor elect. So I think um, it is not surprising that um, uh, the um, APC candidate won. Um, probably what um, is there could be the surprise is the margin of, um, um, you know, victory. But at the same time, it is an uh, um, APC state and uh, with a governor that is uh, considered to be well rooted. And so um, um, he delivered, uh, followed by SDP and then um, uh, PDP. But again, you see that each time you find um, consolidation of this incremental improvements that uh, is happening on the um, electoral process. For instance, with the beavers, you know, making it now impossible or near impossible for people to rig. And then with the, this is first, the first election, by the way, under the new um, Electoral Act um, uh, 2022. Uh, you know the uh, dispute and controversy that went before it was passed, and it's still a uh, work in progress because there are still some uh, uh, issues around uh, uh, primaries and, um, you know, uh, statutory delegates or direct or indirect. But you see that each time there seems to be a progress, something happens. And no thanks to the politicians. You find now that it's uh, the inducement Continuous vote buying was, um, you know, uh, massive. If you if you ask me, um, well, we find um, EFCC uh, going in to arrest people. Fine, but um, of course you will expect uh, some, um, uh, uh, you know, misbehavior uh, or uh, politicians trying to undo themselves to win because for them, politicians is about election and the next election and then winning. They never talk about losing an election. They have somebody to blame for that. But you see, there was, uh, in the case of demand and supply, the politicians are there inducing voters, uh, telling them, if you give us your, your, or you vote for us, or you give us your card, we will um, um, give you money. And that was what, support, what happened. So the demand was there, and then the um, gullible voters decided to play along. So much so, the ingenuity is here. They, 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 they told them, um, just go vote, after casting your vote, uh, slant your uh, ballot um, paper in a particular way to show who you have uh, voted for. Can you see politicians, how far they can go in their contravening uh, uh, laws? And then when it's supposed to be, that defeats what you call the secrecy of ballot. Because you were supposed to just go in there. Otherwise, why do you need to stay in the in the cubicle to mark your uh, or tick your, your 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 the box and then fold it and then go and put it in the in the box? But here, 
um, they decided to, uh, they asked them, don't um, uh, make it um, very visible that we know that you have voted for us so that after voting, you can now come and collect uh, money. These are the politicians for you. They never say never. They are always circumventing rules. But otherwise, I think the uh, kitty should, should and ought to have been an improvement on other elections because Beavers is now working, I mean, in 90%, more than 90% of the places, according to uh, Yaga and all the other observers. I think it worked. And when it failed, it was um, uh, fixed very easily. So we'll say uh, kudos to um, uh, INEC in a way, but it's still early days because this is just one state and then the population is even much. Um, when you have um, a, a nationwide um, elections, can this be replicated? And how do you handle this issue of uh, vote buying by politicians? Uh, it's not enough to also go to the um, on polling day to arrest these people, uh, parade them. Have there been the, what we have in the past? There haven't been any high profile or you know major. Uh, apart from some uh, INEC officials that were uh, jailed some time ago, there should be more convictions to serve as uh, deterrent. It hasn't happened. I think that is where I am not sure the, the new electoral act has addressed that. Uh, but I, I think well, as time goes on, that is the area they will address to make sure that there is no impunity. When people reach by whatever form, any malpractice should be heavily punished to stop and to serve as a deterrent that um, or, uh, unless and it, until we get there or minimizing it, there's not going to be credible election in um, in Nigeria, uh, unfortunately. Messi. All right. Uh, let's talk about the number of registered voters. We're looking at 989,224 registered voters, according to, you know, data being made available. Now, Biodun Oyebanji won the election with uh, 187,057 votes. If you look at the number of vote casts, 360,753. How do you have in a democ uh, in uh, a democracy, in a democratic society, and in a state less than 200 people determining or deciding who becomes the governor? How do we explain this? What exactly is the situation? If you look at the number of persons who registered and the number of vote cast, we're not talking about valid votes now, but we're looking at all the votes that's cast, 989,000. 224 juxtaposing that with 360,753. Should we call this uh, voter apathy? So this is one area. It's not just in Nigeria. I think it's um, across the world where it is the fact that people, the electorate, the voters are, are losing confidence and trust uh, on politicians um, in government. That... Um, uh, 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 trust gap that uh, exists. That is why people sometimes they say, well, listen, uh, even when we vote, our vote does not count, so why do we bother? And so on and so forth. But by not voting, they are also making a decision they are voting. And that is why, for instance, I think from um, official reports, the turnout is about 37%, which is um, an improvement on the 33 of um, the previous time. But it is still very low, you know, because um, um, it says a lot about the integrity and, um, of an election if um, uh, this type of uh, low numbers are the ones that determine um, who governs. Um, it defeats the, the purpose of uh, the majority that we are talking about. So if people have vote, uh, 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 registered, they have to make sure that they go and vote and so that their vote will count. So, but that is where I think um, some um, organizations like the European Union, they are now supporting um, um, uh, the process, supporting INEC and supporting the political parties in a way to raise you know, voter education is very critical. So um, let citizens understand that it is their civic responsibility. It is their right 
to register, not just to register, but to also vote. Because by doing so, they are taking uh, part in the decision making of uh, who governs them. By if you left it on your own and say, well, you are not going there, you are also voting and then allowing it to those who most the politicians will even uh, capitalize on that and do what they have to do. So there is the EU, um, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, support to Nigeria's uh, 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 democratic governance. That is now has they have a a, a, a it's a stew of that program, and I think one of the areas that has been should be tackled as it's been tackled is on voter education to raise awareness around political awareness, not just um, education, but also to let the people understand why they must register, why they must vote, and then um, I don't know who said it that um, uh, uh, politics is too. Uh, uh, much an important thing to be left with uh, politicians because they will mess it up. They're only thinking about themselves, their family, and the next election, and about winning. They never understand that uh, there is a, a, a next time. They want it now, and the eternal now, to win and win and win and win. If you tell them, well, if they don't win, they have somebody to blame. For instance, those who are now inducing voters with uh, 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 money. If uh, if they fail, they will still have either the electoral umpire to blame, or they have one or two things. They will never blame themselves. So I think everybody, all stakeholders, the politicians, the, poli the political parties, INEC itself, the civil society, the media, everybody has a role to play in raising awareness about the need to um, ratchet up the number of those who have registered and then who uh, vote during elections. Because that way, you are leaving, you leave no room now. The room will be squeezed about the possibility of politicians going now to, to manipulate. Because if you leave this high, this gap of about, uh, 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 you know, 60, 60, uh, what, 63 percent of the people who voted, who registered not voting, you see there is a possibility of somebody manipulating with the figure. But when you have a, a mass, a, you know, high turnout, that um, tendency and that possibility is reduced. So don't uh, just sit at home. Um, the youths, I'm glad that they are coming up uh, to, um, uh, if you notice what has happened in the past uh, couple of months, coming out to go and register. Although they are doing it late, uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, it's always uh, lastminute.com. People rush. Even so, I think it's an encouragement that um, they are now seeing that their voice must, uh, you know, should be heard. And how do you do that? Going to register in high numbers, turning out a uh, mass to vote, and then staying there to protect your votes. You know, make sure that um, if you, anybody is trying to induce you, you report them to the authorities. Then the authorities will take it to the next level to prosecute those that have been arrested and jail them, convict them, and let them serve terms. That is the only way you will end impunity. That will, you know, try to bring back the confidence, the trust in the electoral process, and then the consolidation of democracy. Well, everyone is hoping that uh, it's a good thing that you were seeing the movement of having PVCs. And so if you've not gotten your PVCs, it's very important that you get it. Uh, that movement is still ongoing. But th does it also translate into going out to cast your vote? We have seen that in the 2023 elections where you have almost a million persons being registered, but not even close to half a million casting their votes. Very sad. And deciding who becomes... Uh, you know, the governor of a state. And in this population, we see the videos of vote buying and vote buyers, mostly young persons who are uh, bragging and, 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 and very happy to showcase all of that. But you have raised very valid point about education. Uh, beyond the fact that we're asking that people, um, you know, be part of the electoral process, they need to understand the dynamics of the process and the consequence that it holds for everyone. But let's also go to another issue, away from uh, voter apathy. Uh, the, the, another issue is the third force. 
Now, there are several conversations about the thought force ahead of the 2023 general elections. And a lot of persons, political pundits have described the AKT elections, including the Oshun elections, which is yet to come, as very, very important to our elections. It's like, it's going to be a reflection. Whatever happens now will just be, uh, you know, a replica of what's going to happen in 2023. Another issue is that you have 16 candidates who are contesting for that particular uh, position or thereabout, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it feels like um, everyone is looking beyond the 16. So Nigerians have been complaining about having, oh, the, you know, a certain party. Maybe I should go ahead. The APC and the PT PDP being very dominant. And one would expect that Nigerians would have looked beyond uh, you know, this dominant part is the binary options that we have to something different. But 16, and then you still have the same. So do you see a possibility of a thought force, being that it wasn't reflected in the AKT elections? Well, um, it's probably too early, um, or rather too late for, for, them, for the effect to happen in them. Or so, you know, which is, is happening, the election is on the 16th of July. But I can tell you that between now and um, and it's been going on, there is something, a movement is taking place. Something is happening that people are also taking, those who are political um, uh, pundits, uh, uh, analysts, uh, are taking note of it. That um, um, if you call it third first or whatever you call it, there is the consciousness that things are not good in Nigeria. This is not where Nigeria ought to be in terms of governance, in terms of leadership, in terms of management of diversity, in terms of security, in terms of economic growth, in terms of poverty and unemployment, in terms of um, the fact that um, teachers um, have been on strike for more than five months and students are roaming the streets. In terms of the fact that uh, the, 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 um, the health system is, um, uh, uh, you know, underfunded and comatose, which allows those who can afford it to be now, they are now traveling abroad for what you call um, uh, uh, medical tourism. In terms of um, the fact that it's becoming too difficult, I, I was reading a, 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 a tweet by a professor in, um, uh, from uh, the University of Nigeria, Ansuka, a lady. She was saying that, her, she bought, she's now buying diesel for 40, uh, uh, a week, 40,000 naira to run her car, and her salary is about 400,000 naira. If she uses that for, for one week, what will be left for her to use and then to cover all the other things? That is just a microcosm. That gives you, that's a metaphor of what Nigeria is going through. That life has become too difficult. Life has become, there is poverty in the midst of plenty. Nigeria is not zero poor. Nigeria is a, a country that has mismanaged. The, the resources have been mismanaged. But this cannot continue. And then if the electorates now see that there is a, a window, these two parties have been tried since 1999. You know, both have had them, you know, I don't know how many years they've had. If things have not improved, perhaps they are also looking somewhere else to see whether there is a window of opportunity to try another, if you call it third first, fourth force, or whatever force. But the, the, the bottom line is that things are not working in Nigeria it's as it should be. Nigerians are suffering, and then Nigerians are dying, you know, both from hunger and insecurity. You know, every now and then you hear about kidnappings, you hear about killings in churches, in mosques, in markets, everywhere. That is not the Nigeria that many people know. Or, or you know, it's not the Nigeria that the youth should be looking up to. The youth and everybody, they have a responsibility to say, listen, um, enough is enough. Let us, and how do you do that? You are not um, encouraging any uh, 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 violent uh, uh, change. The only way you can bring a positive change about is uh, through uh, election, through the ballot box. And if now people are waking up, um, well, 
eight, uh, seven months before the next election might be too short, but you know, in the politics, they say that is a uh, uh, 24 hours is like a lifetime. Anything, call it me. I hope, um, yeah, yes. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we have to move on. I'd like to share your thoughts on other issues because we have less, uh, less than two minutes uh, on this particular Please segment. Now, the, the, another issue is the issue of uh, voters' inducement or vote buying that's, that's been reported. And we actually saw videos that emerged. Do, do you think that, you know, the court actually have any concern with it, especially when INEC, I mean, why should INEC go ahead? That's the question. Uh, declaring a winner when there's an infraction with the election. We're looking at the Electoral Act now. Uh, what do you make of this? And on the second hand, do you see all of this manifesting in 2023 election? Well, it takes, um, uh, 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 it's a collective responsibility. The conduct and the process of, um, you know, a credible election. The electoral umpire, what do you expect INEC to do? You wanted INEC to go and then uh, stop uh, people who... Uh, the INEC is to conduct and organize elections. So but but, but if, the, not, if, if there is an infraction, thing. Paul Ejime, if there's an infraction, should they go ahead and declare a winner when you know that the election has, you know, infraction? That, that's the question Nigerians are where, asking. Yeah, this is where... The law allows that to continue. But remember that elections can also be nullified. If the authorities, the security, those who are in charge of securing this uh, vote, can now prove that they're, because it's not by just uh, um, staying it. You have to, the, 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 the process, democracy allows a process. Even if you, got, you arrested somebody, you have to prove that he has committed a, a crime. So you are deemed innocent until you are proved they are guilty. So even when elections have been INEC, they are conducting and organizing that election, it is left now for the parties and for the, elect uh, the security people to do the needful. And when they now see that um, the uh, uh, violation or the vote buying is enough, to uh, nullify the vote, you have seen where elections were held, and then the results are nullified. It doesn't matter. Some people would have even been declared uh, 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 winners, but they can be said they can uh, the courts can turn that down. But another thing is also what the integrity of the court. So you see, everybody is a whole government. It's not just um, one person. It's not our neck. It's not just political parties. It's not the voter. Everybody must do their bit their part for there to be credible election. So I wouldn't say it is wrong to ask INEC to stop an election because there was, a, you know, this it's still an allegation. Even when you see them, when even when you catch a thief, you still have to prosecute them and then prove them, take them to court. And the court is the only, person, only agency or institution that can, you know, prove, uh, uh, declare somebody guilty of an offense. All right, uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. We have to let you go at this point. I wish we had more time to continue this conversation. Paul Ejime. Thank you, Mercy, for having me. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning, looking at the aftermath of the Ekiti State governorship elections with the winner, Biondu Oyebanji. Uh, well, we definitely continue this conversation in another time, but that's the much we can take right now. And here's a public affairs and international affairs analyst. We appreciate your time. When we return, it will be time for us to look at sickle cells as a disease. Stay with us.